I know exactly where to put you. Ha ha ha. It is Slytherin. <laughs> I never thought I would ever do a vlog, but here we are. This is the first episode of a new format I would like to introduce to the channel, which will be called Vlogdown. And these will be short little videos about photography and my everyday life still continuing with photography, especially analog photography during the lockdown, since as the name suggests, it's a combination of vlog and lockdown, which I know might not be super creative, but it just kind of made sense, so sorry. And the reason why I kind of have the time to do these kind of videos right now is here a long story about my job situation would follow, but I will spare you the details and therefore long story short, I am on hold from work right now and currently waiting to be called in again. So I don't know for how long I can keep the frequency of these vlog down videos up, but I figured that I just have the time right now, so I'll just start and get some things done that I wanted to get done for quite some time. Today, I have basically three things on the list. And number one is to get some more scanning done. As you can see here, I'm already in the middle of scanning and I was also scanning yesterday already. Most of my friends are stuck at home and so is my family, so I just thought this is a good time to dig out some old photos that I have together with them and send them over to send over some good vibes and some love. Plus some friends and me wanted to go to a festival in a couple of months from now, but we don't know if it's still gonna happen. So I thought I will also look for some old memories of prior festivals we went to together, the festival we were supposed to go to in a couple of months. We have been last year as well and I didn't have the chance to scan the negatives yet so I'm very excited to do so. And number two is that I want to get an overview over the film that I have at home right now. I know that I have quite a lot of medium format film at home which I do not really shoot that much at the moment and I think I might be running low on 35 millimeter film but I'm not completely sure of what I have in my fridge. So I will take a look, get an overview and I also had the idea to maybe put some of my medium format film, I'm not shooting for sure, up on the internet for exchange. So some people who might be interested in this could maybe offer me 35 millimeter film and so none of us would have to buy some film, but we'll see. And number three is that I would like to prepare some developer for my darkroom. I want to develop some film. I do still have some Rodinal and some older Extol in my darkroom, but I do also want to develop some rolls that are longer expired and Rodinal is not the best developer for this job since it's quite grainy. And I used the Extol recently and it was still good then, but I just saw that it turned a little bit of yellow and with Extol it's an all or nothing game, which means if your developer is dead, you're and you can just toss your film in the garbage. So I will not want to risk this, but I would rather rather prepare some new stock solution. And I still have a five liter bag of Extol in my darkroom I can mix up. When preparing new developers, they usually need some time to rest and sit. So I know that if I prepare it today, I'll probably be able to use it tomorrow. And it's been quite a long time ago since I mixed up some Extol last, so I will have to read the instructions again, so I thought maybe it's interesting for you as well. I will probably also do some other things around the house that are related to photography, so I will just bring you around and you can spend the day with me. Have fun! Here is some Ilford XP2. I think this is one of the first rolls I'm scanning. I don't, I can't remember if I ever scanned XP2 before. So this will be very interesting to see how it works because it looks either foggy or I don't know if the base color is always like a muddier gray than with normal black and white film. But yeah, let's see. 
Oh, and by the way, I never use cotton gloves when I scan my negatives. And the reason for this is that I made the experience that sometimes these like little fluff balls of cotton get stuck in my negatives. So I had better experience when just touching the film of my bare hand, but being very careful, just touching it on the edges and not on the film or on the emulsion set itself. So just don't, you know, get panicked that I'm not wearing gloves. <laughs> You can probably see that this table is super wobbly, right? I built it myself and this was not a good idea. <laughs> but I will get this fixed. It's kind of funny because with the XP2, when I scan it in like 48-bit color, there actually is real color in it. If I scan usual black and white film, it kind of sometimes gets sepia toned or something, but it's never real color. But here, the, the colors look very funky. Just take a look. I mean, I will scan them in in black and white anyway, but I think this is something fun I could try to play around with in the future. I live in a house together with some friends, so sometimes I stumble upon things that I haven't seen before, as for example this book here. It's called Cabin Porn, and I remember that my flatmate showed it to me before, but I kind of didn't realize. And I just found it again. And this is beautiful. It has pictures of cabins from Scandinavia in it. And the pictures are absolutely gorgeous. So as a tip, you should always take a second look at your bookshelves and maybe you will find something you have long forgotten, which gives you a spark of inspiration. And by the way, I'm using the normal uh, Epson Perfection scan software. I'm not using ViewScan or Silverfast. I'm very happy with the results that I get with the normal Epson software. I know a lot of people are not, but I think my images are sharp enough for social media. Sometimes for printing it could be better, but I think it's a problem of a lot of flatbed scanners. Yeah, I could show you my workaround with the Epson software for black and white and for color film if you're interested in this, so just let me know. So I keep most of my film in this box right here. And sometimes I do keep those old packages of older film just so I can look up the specs again. What do we have here? Some Portra. Most of these 35 millimeter rolls are expired. I think it's some Superior in here. Then we have some Lomochrome. Some Prestige. Some more expired film. And I bought some Kodak film last year before the price raise. So I have some Kodak, Kodak Gold in here, some Fuji C200, uh, some Molomography, and I think that most of the rest here should be medium format film. I shoot quite a lot of black and white in medium format since I develop it myself. And with the Velvia and Provia packs, I might shoot some slide film, but I will for sure not shoot that many rolls that I have. So I might maybe try to get some of those for exchange. This is still sealed. Oh, this is not sealed anymore. But this is still sealed, so maybe I might put these two up on the internet for exchange. And let me show you the rest. I used to keep most of my film in the freezer right here. But since we do need some more space for food in the freezer, I put most of it in here. This is a fridge which is not working anymore, so this is serving as like a cupboard or shelf space. But I do have some left here, so let's take a look. Here I do have some more 35mm film. This is mostly consumer grade films, as for example this Kodak Farbwelt film here, which is sold in German drugstores. I mean not anymore, but it was it was used to sold there. Then do have some more medium format black and white. This can stay here. I will for sure use this and this as well. And in here. 
to have some slide film in 35 and some black and white medium format, also some more XP2 and some more slide film in medium format. The film that I usually have ready accessible to shoot on a regular go is in this working fridge right here. I do have some 35, I do have two rolls of Sinister left, precious little film stock I will not browse through but I will keep this for a special moment and I have some fresh color plus some more fresh C200 here look at this film right here I think this is a Ukrainian black and white film I bought at Safe Light Berlin which is a very cool camera analog camera store in Berlin and apart from that you can see I do have some 35 left but I do not have that many high-speed ISO films left especially for color so I might consider getting some Kodak Ultra Max and maybe some Portra 4 or 800 something around this so I kind of got a rough overview of what I have and my gut feeling was right I do have too much medium format compared to the 35 that I need more urgently. All right, I will go to my darkroom now and pick out the stuff that I need to mix up some developer, but my basement is super scary and the way to my darkroom is like really, really scary. So if I will not be back in like five minutes, please, you know, file a report that I'm missing or something. And I just want to say that it was a pleasure to meet you. So wish me luck. A few moments later. Okay, I survived and I got all of the stuff that we're gonna need to mix up some developer. I'm outside now because I don't want to inhale any of the developer fumes and I'm gonna show you what we will need. First up we have the x here, which contains of part A and part B. Then we have some distilled water that I warmed up to around 22 degrees. We have a funnel here to put the powder into the water. Have a mixing thingy here and a container that can store one liter. And we have a cat as a film developer supervisor. <laughs> okay, so the package is saying that we have to dissolve part A in four liters of water. And we have to wait until part A is completely dissolved to put part B in and then we can add up the rest until 5 liters. Since I have distilled water here in a 5 liter canister, I will take 1 liter out and store it in this thingy. Put part A in here and then let it dissolve, probably for a couple of hours. And when it's completely dissolved, I will put part B in and add up the rest of the water. So I would say, let's do it. Here, the part A of x turned orange. I will take this inside, keep it warm and just wait until it fully resolves. And then in a couple of hours, we will put part B in. Bye. 